Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this. What we have here is the RC four-wheel drive Mojave 2 four-door interior. For those of you not aware, it is this one here. Let's go ahead and take it out of the box and see how it looks. What we're working with is an entire floor. We've got the door panels, we have the seat backs. This is, I don't know which is front, which is rear just yet. Seat fronts, we have our dashboard. The dashboard looks fantastic. It has the proper curvature. The Mojave dash panel doesn't have the correct curvature. This is the dash pad out of the Mojave. Unfortunately, the wheel is glued in there, so I apologize for that. But if you compare, you can see here the profiles. This one is completely flat. Whereas the actual truck has this more curved top. Now this is a right-hand drive version, which does make sense as for the most part, the crew cab version of the Toyota was sold in the right-hand drive market. Everything looks pretty good so far. Very, very shiny plastics. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that you use a matte clear coat. All right, we've got our low range gearbox and our standard gearbox. Steering wheel looks pretty good for the SR5 model. This is the, oh wow, actually individual brake pedals column stocks these vents here will go on top of the dash right there not all toyota pickups of this vintage have these upper dash vents but on the higher end models they did these are designed not to blow air at the driver or occupants i should say and rather at the side windows for deep parking. yeah there's quite a number of little tiny details accelerator pedal window cranks i don't know what this little tiny thing is right there armrests front and rear and this, if that's right, okay. These are the central vents, and then these are the, uh, I think, oil pressure and ammeter or voltmeter. What caught my attention was this. We have a number of really tiny little pieces of laser cut metal. Ooh, that actually has a little speedometer right there. That's all the hardware it needs. This is, uh, this is interesting. This will be fun to put together. Now, the instructions are just one page which again makes sense. This is not that complicated of an interior, perhaps minus all of these components. But as for the interior bucket, I mean, it's gonna be the dash, the firewall, the seat pieces and the door panels. I'm gonna go ahead and snip off all of these and primer them and we'll be right back. Well, all the large parts have been painted for the RC four wheel drive crew cab interior set. I painted everything in gloss red and then masked off what I wanted to keep gloss red in the case of the floor, the doors, and the front kick panel. And in the case for the floors and the kick panel, they were sprayed down with a stone texture. And then after the texture had dried, I go in over that with a burgundy paint, which I also did on the doors to kind of show different uh, colors of plastic. But on the doors, I did not do the stone texture. Once that was all done, because the burgundy was a certain gloss and the red was actually high gloss, everything got sprayed with a flat clear coat. Now we can start to do some assembly. I want to put the window cranks on first, but these are the ones that it came with. And I don't know, they were kind of bland. The actual truck, which I own, has some other details that these lack, so I went ahead and just printed a new set of window cranks on the Polyjet. Window cranks are all on, and now we can go ahead and install the armrests. I gave these a very, very slight texture. I haven't actually matte coated these. I'll do this when the whole door is assembled. The reason why is because usually if I try and matte coat something, or I should say just paint something like this, uh, it likes to blow away with the uh, pressure of the spray nozzle. So in this case here, you know, it's gonna be simple enough to just paint it when it's all done with the matte clear. Armrests are on, and now we can take a look at the door latches. Because I'm incapable of reading instructions, we're gonna take the armrests back off quickly, because they were drying, and we are going to install these little aluminum strips right here. There are two links, there's a shorter one and a longer one. The shorter goes in the rear and the longer goes in the front, and they will seat themselves right in this long little slit right there. Okay, attempt number two is better. What's weird is that this one's a little bit too short and I think that's because the dash is going to take up this space over here. I do wanna turn my attention to this little laser cut aluminum sheet. These are unfortunately not adhesive backed. So when you peel one off, uh, it's, it's, they're all stuck on this sheet here because the plastic is what has the adhesive on it. So this means you have to apply adhesive onto the part and then that'll hold this down. I mean, that's that's fine and all. It's just, and I can understand why maybe they didn't do it because if you have adhesive on this and you lay it down incorrectly, peeling it up will bend it. So I'm, I'm not in love with doing that, but I think it is the lesser of all the evils. These four, one, two, three, 
uh, four pieces there are the inside door latches and I want them to be interior color but if I paint these red you'll never see them so I'll just paint them burgundy and that'll make them present but not this aluminum color that they currently are the inside dash trim piece here I'm going to paint this in either silver or charcoal I'm sorry the dash panel here itself I'm a little fuzzy on I I want to go with a charcoal color because that's how my Toyota truck is but these were also available in wood grain so that'll be up for debate these are the vent registers here one and two these should be black Unfortunately, if I paint them black, then the area that they go, which is also going to be painted black, will drown them out. So the idea is to paint this maybe charcoal, and that I think will help. Also, the surround piece here should be charcoal color as well. So I'll see what I can do, but I think what I need to do in the meantime is paint the radio, the vent controls, the ashtray, and all of those little detail pieces. Went ahead and painted the little door latch pieces here in burgundy, and now we'll just peel them off and drop them right into the door pocket here. And then I'll just matte clear over the whole thing. Next, I want to grind out the entire instrument cluster area because even though it has this little decal that goes in there, not to mention the laser cut metal trim, I want this to light up. So here's what we're going to do. First, we'll jumble the whole thing out. I'll take this burr tool and come on in. This is pretty clean. Next, we'll just take the X-Acto knife and just kind of tidy it up a little bit. Please be careful, these knives are very sharp. I'm not gonna do this on camera because I've actually gotta get my face in here to make sure that I, I do a nice clean job. There we have it. I'll put this aside for a minute because I also want to do this to these gauges here. These would be a lot simpler. We'll just drill a little hole in the middle. While the paint is still wet, I'm gonna put a little couple dabs of glue in the areas where there is no paint. I'm not too worried if I get some on the paint. It'll all dry anyway. The reason for this is I want to clear coat over everything. All right, so I'll just drop this straight in. All right, just like that. Lastly, we'll put in the vents. Now, to be honest, they, they, they do have little features in here. The actual vent is a ball, so it can be rotated in any orientation. So if you get these in crooked or doesn't really doesn't really matter because that's how the actual truck is. Just drop that in. Perfect. I'll put a small drop of adhesive in the center there on the other side as well. I will get my semicircle thing over here and drop it in. I know the colors don't match, but I can paint this afterwards. I don't want to do that right now because I know for a fact that I'll scratch the paint installing it. I'll put that right there. I don't know if this is correct, but knowing how the original truck actually looks, it's correct enough for me. Okay, I'll let that dry standing up. To make our lens, will be pretty darn simple. We're going to start by getting the X-Acto knife out. Remember, these are very sharp, so please be careful. I have this side painted, so I don't want to scratch it, so we just flip it on over. I'll use this bottom edge here, which is already flat. And I'm not going to go right up to it. I'm going to go a little tiny bit past it, so it hangs off a bit, just like that, okay? Sorry, it's probably not the best view. We'll take the blunt side of the X-Acto knife and just run it around, just like that. And now we've got little feature here. I'm going to take the sharp side of the X-Acto knife and cut this out. So we'll try and break this. There we go. That's out. Peel this off. Don't be worried about scratching this because we're going to put hot glue and a sticker on it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Let's see if this fits. What we want to do is install this decal directly on it as carefully as we can. I'm trying to think now how to install this piece on top of this piece successfully. You can see when it's installed, that's the look you're going to get. First, we're going to drop this in. Just get an idea of how it looks and how it sits in there. Okay, there you go. It looks like I hadn't destroyed it yet. And that goes directly on top. And pretty good. I think what we're going to do is glue the metal part to the gauges. Okay, we have gone ahead and installed that. Just put a little bit of glue. 
give it some time and it's all done. All right, we're gonna get our good friend, the glue gun. I also painted the inner ring on this black because again, on my truck, that's how it is. We'll take our gauges, plop them straight in there. Looking good. I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure to the center just so that it doesn't move. I was hoping not to cut out these two posts, but eh, we'll see. In the meantime, I just wanna get the glue gun and I'll try and do this on camera. Squeeze, same on the other side. All right, and let it cool. I've gone ahead and made a couple of my LED arrays. Here's the first one, and I know it looks weird, but trust me, it'll make sense in a sec. The idea is to hot glue the LEDs in in a cross-firing direction to help minimize hot spots. So ideally, one goes there, one goes there, and then this wire will wrap around and plug into the main harness. As for the auxiliary lights, this is a little bit more straightforward. These two are not ultra-bright green LEDs. They simply glow green, and these will go in just like that and line up with those gauges. I think we'll start with that one first because that's a little bit easier. Let's take the lens that we had earlier, drop it right in there. You can see it's gonna fit right behind the gauges and we'll get our glue gun and just glue it in. Now the goal here is actually to get the glue directly on the gauges. The hot glue behaves in a very similar fashion to a light pipe. We're going to just jam uh, an LED in here later and the hot glue is going to dissipate the light. And when it's all done, I mean, you're not gonna see anything. Right now it's still hot, so it's clear, but it will dry translucent. All right, so we'll just take the gauge here. And I'm actually gonna use the hot glue gun to make a couple of little uh, holes where I can jam the LED just like that. That looks pretty lined up. Let that cool and then pot the back of it a little bit more to get some security and also prevent these from touching and shorting out. These are adequately installed, so let's move on to the dash. This one's a little bit trickier, so the idea here, and the good news, by the way, is the fact that the dash isn't actually symmetric. If everything was evenly spaced, then we could actually see if one light was shining higher or lower, and in this case here, we're a little bit more lucky. So we'll take some hot glue and just give it a little squirt right there and another one right here and very quickly get over there and use a screwdriver to help oh my god you've got to be kidding me all right that's i'll be back okay i resoldered it and i'm going to try and heat up where i put that glue again aren't you glad i didn't edit that out so we'll just jam that there and this one here Bend it up a little tiny bit. Looks pretty good right there. Okay, I've got them installed, and that is a little bit of a test uh, glow here. I'll make sure that it's it's pretty even. If I turn it around, you can see what we're working with. Now I can better secure the LEDs and pot the entire area. Our dash is all wired up, and now the next thing I want to do is obviously assemble this, but I'm going to cover this whole illuminated area as well as this area with this liquid tape. It dries quite opaque and helps to prevent light bleed. It also uh, behaves more like wax than paint does because I've also found that paint simply doesn't bond to the hot glue and this stuff works really well. Okay, now that everything is dried, we'll just route the wires to the rear and uh, pray that this stuff actually fits, which is going to be a little, I think it actually does. All right, cool, I got lucky there. We want to install the steering column now, but let's go ahead and detail the little key. A little bit more glue back here. And this will just, should just drop right in here, I guess. Get a little bit of a push, and there it is, it's in. Let's put the seats together. According to the manual, we have to put a little bit of glue in all of these little holes and just press the assembly together. Oh boy, there, oh there they go, okay. Urgh. If I had done this properly, we should have attached these first, filled the seam, oh, this doesn't want to go in, and then painted them. Cool, one seat, do that again for this one. All right, to assemble the seats, we just, I guess we just snap these in, I guess. Put a little bit of adhesive here. But it does look like, for the most part, they should just snap in place. There's a couple of undercuts here for these little snap features. I think we just line up. And from what I can tell, there's no front or rear differences. Okay. Boy, it's a lot of force, but it does go in. Same with the front. 
we'll do our pedals next. So we'll start with, uh, here we go. We can install our shifters. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, door panels onto the vehicle. This is the little screw bag that it came with. I've not opened this yet. We'll get the six millimeter long self-tapping screws. Just push them through the back of this here. So we'll take this here and basically just line these all up and just thread them on in. Get that started. Come over here. Right, and do the same to the other side. So the interior will stay like this until the dash is in. And let's, I guess, move back to that. Now it is time to install the dash onto the main interior bucket. And I have some interesting notes here. We see that they're showing one, two, three, and then three more screws. And here, it looks like some kind of a tab. Unfortunately, on the dash, you can see right here, there is a screw hole. So perhaps something has changed, but I think that we have to put in a couple of screws there as well. Take the dash, line this up. Should line up pretty easily. I'm a little bit concerned about the fitment here because of all the paint that I put on this. It is telling us to put some adhesive here, which I'll do after I screw it in place. And then it looks like this will line up very nicely right there. For the lower screw, it's telling us to use a eight millimeter long self-tapping screw. So we'll do that. For the top, I'm going to use these M8 screws as well. The remainder of the screws, for these three, it says to use these eight millimeter long screws at the front. And at the rear, all we're left with is the little machine thread screws, but the good news is I'm just gonna use the screws that are on the body. This mount here is the point at which the bed and the cab bolt together. At this point, we'll grab the body and install this interior set. The installation of the interior was quite straightforward. So looking at the truck underneath, you can see the three screws that I went ahead and used from the interior kit. And at the rear, it's a little bit harder to see, but basically this screw right here, as I mentioned, that holds the bed and the body together is embedded way up in there. So with those five screws, the entire interior set will stay in place. Externally, sorry about my uh, reflection in the glass, you can see that it looks fantastic. We can see right into the truck, back window as well. I went ahead and made a visor and dome light set. Uh, see that with the, little rear view, with the rear view mirror. It's got the passenger side visor down with a little vanity mirror. But overall, this interior really is very, very nice on this truck, especially given the simplicity of the assembly. Let's turn the dash lights on. The interior is compatible with the Ampro body mounting system. So that was nice to see. All right, body installed, and there it is. I have to say that I made one glaring error. When I put the lens in, I should have painted the perimeter of the lens with a matte black paint because the bleed that you see around the edge of the aluminum trim plate is nothing more than the lens behaving like a light pipe. So that is a heck of a rookie mistake. So please do not do this on your vehicle because it is too late for mine. As for the auxiliary gauges, you can see them lit up right there. Those look really good. So the light bleed is not nearly as bad as it looks here. Uh, in fact, in person, the perimeter uh, is really not that noticeable. Here, the, the exposure is just making it so much worse than it actually is. And with that, our interior set is complete. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit of a combination, purchasing a ready-made interior with a little bit of personalization. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.